So there's a good reason why you're probably not improving as fast as you want with your art. And that is because just having the knowledge of it or of a specific subject of art is not going to translate into a practical skill or the application of it directly. So let's take perspective, for example. A lot of us as creators understand we need to implement perspective using vanishing points, horizon lines to create three-dimensional depth in a 2D picture plane. A lot of us understand that concept, but a lot of us actually just struggle to utilize that from our imagination when we're drawing a variety of scenes from different camera angles. And that can be a very frustrating feeling for many of us, thinking that we know one thing and then just not being able to utilize it within our work. And it is this frustration that slows down a lot of our growth. And we have to be able to bridge that gap between what we know and actually implementing it in a, in a practical way. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna give you guys the key to implement your artistic theory and to not get hung up on your artistic plateaus and to constantly seek progression in a more consistent way. I'm gonna give you three different steps to take your knowledge and theory of art and turn them directly into paintings. I'm Tyler Edlin. I've been an artist and creator here on YouTube now for close to 15 years. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's begin. Number one on the first step of implementation is practice, of course. No, no, I am kidding. Everyone always says just practice, but I feel there's a far more important thing to do before any practice, and that is to remove any kind of barriers in between your drawing and your painting that you may have. Think of these barriers as unneeded friction between you and your creation. And these come in a variety of ways and can plague us as creators if we don't keep an eye on them. And that's what I'm gonna go over in this first part. So we do know we have to practice, but let's say we're staring at a blank page and the question most students will ask is like, what do I actually need to practice and where do I begin? I see this plenty of times in the comments on YouTube, the comments on Instagram and in my own classes. People just don't know what to draw or how much to draw of it to actually get better. And one of my favorite answers is to simply just say, draw whatever you want, but right, there's a catch. Draw what you want, but make sure there are different layers of intent behind the drawing or the painting. So maybe one layer is like, okay, I want to improve on color and light. And then like another layer is let's practice using color temperature, right? See how there's kind of like structured instances. Like it doesn't matter if I'm drawing a, a box or a cube or if I'm drawing the house next door, right? But as long as I'm thinking about color and light in various different stages and steps. I mean, you could apply it to whatever you want. Just do it with intent. And of course, if you're just analyzing and reflecting upon these problems as you go, that's gonna help you improve as well. Again, it's applying just a little bit of structure to whatever interests you, and that is the first key. And things do get a little tricky because when I do say draw whatever you want, a lot of people end up just drawing nothing or they're gonna just draw the same one thing that they always draw. Maybe it's the same portrait, maybe it's the same kind of tree, right? People have comfort zones and they like to stay in them. And so we need to get rid of these excuses and minimize these barriers, as I was saying. So let's break down the three biggest reasons that people don't practice and how to fix them. The first one is, of course, I don't have the time. I've used this one before, I know you guys have. Let me know if you've never not had the time. But the solution is to balance out your over expenditures of your, your time. And what I mean by this is like for me personally, I cut back on my Netflix binging, on my video game playing, and I choose to wake up a little bit earlier. I need to wake up before my kids wake up if I want that extra time in the day to accomplish what I need to. But like, again, check your screen time on your social medias. That's an easy like hour. I know a lot of us will, will do it without even thinking, whether we're you know waiting for the microwave to go or whether we're in the restroom or whether we're waiting on a bus. Like a lot of us are racking up loads of screen time. This could be used to like, okay, I can plan out a, a drawing schedule for myself. I could use this time to gather additional references and line it all up. I have to do this a lot with my work. When I'm not actively on my computer working, I'm setting up the stages and making lists on my phone so that I know when I sit down, I know exactly what I'm gonna do, how long I'm gonna do it, and it's just a great way of keeping yourself productive without being overly stressed about it. Again, time can be a legitimate excuse, but let's just minimize how often we're using that, right? Because we, we all are short on time. Everyone's short on time these days. I'm not gonna pretend that we're not. But the second thing is, 
I don't know what to draw. And I have a very simple solution for this. And that's simply just to go on Pinterest, type in whatever interests you, just use the top page, do no scrolling, make that a little handicap or a little rule for yourself. It's like, I'm not gonna scroll, I'm gonna just pick something from the subject that appears in the top and you're just gonna draw about that. And again, a lot of the problems people have is that they're gonna overthink this process. And same with like artists starting YouTubes and things like that, like I don't know how to start one, you just hit record. When you're drawing, you just start drawing or you just start painting. Grab one of the first images that interests you. Just don't blame the references or use the lack of references as an excuse not to get going. Use what you already know in your knowledge and try to apply it to the reference directly. And before you know it, you're making your own beautiful work that's inspired by one particular source. And then the last big excuse that I often hear is like, well, I know what to make. I just don't know how to draw or paint it. And there's a simple solution for this as well. And that's of course, take a small course or watch a video on it. And if you don't have a lot of money or you don't know where to look, well, that's what we have Skillshare here for. So sometimes we're just simply lacking the know-how to create what we want. And we want to avoid the trap of gathering too much theory and not implementing it the correct way. And so to reach that next level, to achieve our goals, we do want to find classes with a lot of substance that will lead to very specific assignments and have a course project-based learning. And so before I do share these other tips in this video, I do want to in introduce the sponsor and that is of course Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online community and offers a ton of inspiring classes taught by real artists and experts in the field. Skillshare has learning pathways to get you from beginner to pro in a lot of exciting and creative disciplines. So for example, I've been using this one learning pathway, build 3D models and animation with Blender. Skillshare definitely makes this possible for someone like me because I'm very overwhelmed with anything remotely 3D. And so if you want to take a dive into 3D and learn how to actually implement that in your work, like myself and other professionals, you can follow this learning pathway as well. And you can add Blender to your tool belt with an actual project to show for it using these skills that you learned and built up. But it goes far beyond Blender. There are classes on this on illustration, design, anatomy and figure drawing, pretty much anything you want to learn. Every class is worth your time because at the end you will have learned to implement these skills and then you can build your portfolio as you go. So if you want to try out Skillshare, they have a special offer right now where the first 500 people to use my link is going to get one month free. That's free art classes, guys. So you can get measurable progress within 30 days and have no risk. Skillshare is going to help you remove these barriers and these frictions between you and your goals. So click the link in my description and thank you Skillshare for of course sponsoring this video. So there you have it. Let's cut the excuses. Let's minimize the barriers and let's get drawing. And so let's move on to tip number two. And for today, that is to not focus on the result. And I do hear from a lot of students that they do hesitate of implementing various aspects into their work because they fear that it's actually going to ruin their final image or painting. For example, a character artist may not add a background because they are unsure of themselves, or an environment artist won't add figures because they don't know their anatomy enough. But remember, it's just not always about that final result. Your best teacher here is always experience, and part of that is just simply embracing the journey. It's not always sunshine and rainbows when it comes to creating, and we have to embrace both failure and success on our day to day. Now this is gonna sound a little counterintuitive to some of you, but it, it actually took me a, a few years to, to fully kind of implement and to get working. I just had to restructure my way of thinking when it comes to creating and that I had to kind of remove part of myself from it and that I kind of treat a lot of my images as throwaway or disposable. I just don't get too attached to them too early. And that's because when I was younger, I had worried excessively about the final product. It, I was putting a lot of unneeded pressure on my shoulders before a piece of work was even finished. How many of you have done that out there? I can't be the only one. So I do know there are artists and creators out there that say you have to put your whole self, your entire self into every piece. And I'm sure that that's going to work for some of you. But if you're anything like me, it's kind of like let the creativity come out, but also be not bent or burnt out if it turns to shit. Because realistically, they'll be hundreds of paintings and drawings from us that are gonna turn out bad. And we kind of have to learn to live with that. It's part of the process. And, and part of this too will reduce how much you're overly critical about certain aspects of it. And that's gonna reduce friction in many ways like frustration, self-doubt, 
and perfectionism. And we could have a whole video on perfectionism, but this is the part of us that is creating these barriers between us and our drawing and our paintings. Ultimately, it's gonna stifle our creativity and hinder this growth that we need when we're spent so much time worrying about what it's gonna look like at the finish line. So I do still put my whole self and entire self into the painting. I'm just detaching myself or part of myself from the final outcome of the picture. Easier said than done, but try to practice it. Let me know how it goes. And another thing you can do on this subject is just simply to experiment more. Try different processes by different artists or try different softwares. Like sometimes I like to switch it up between like Blender or VR or just Photoshop or maybe even pen and paper and then try to tackle a particular subject I'm interested in. Or maybe I'll f discover a new artist that I love and try to create the way they create and I'll learn something new along the way, even though it, it probably won't turn out super awesome the first time I do it. Do seek inspiration from a variety of sources, not just your favorite anime. Try different methods of approaches and do embrace learning from other people. So mimic different styles, adopt a different style every week if you want and try a different way of creating. It's a lot of fun. Mark Burnett is doing that a lot on his channel lately, actually. Uh, but ultimately with this, remember, failure does not matter. Fear of it holds any of us back. So you guys poured your heart and soul into your artwork. You took those previous tips, you put them into practice, and guess what? The, the piece just didn't work out. And this leads to my third tip, that it's okay, because you can just simply try Again, old masters have done this throughout history way more than we can even account for. We, as, as students and, and admirers of art, we see textbooks, we see art books, we often just see the final result. But more often than not, a lot of masters painted the same image 10 to 15 times, but we would never really kind of see a lot of that. Uh, take, for example, J.C. Leindecker. If you just type his name and you type in prep sketches with it, you're going to see he would do like 10 drawings of the same kind of person or the same kind of illustration before he ever committed to that final. And, and that kind of just leads to my next point on this is that good art, good drawing, good, good painting does take a lot of time. And there's a misconception with a lot of the students that I see my own, uh, including, and that is like art should be rushed or that good art doesn't take a lot of time when that is a completely the opposite case. Because when I was starting out, even after finishing art school and kind of, you know, starting my career, on average, my paintings and illustrations would take anywhere from like 30 to 45 hours. And that is okay. Like I, I see a lot of students kind of hitting the four hour mark or the five hour mark and absolutely just throwing in the towel because it doesn't look right. But in all honesty, if you're only spending five to 10 hours even on an image, you're barely just scratching the surface for what you need to be doing. There is just no shame in failing and that it is perfectly okay and normal. Zone in on what's giving you issues to the best of your ability and analyze why it didn't work and then just simply get back on the horse and give it another shot. Now, if you're absolutely just beyond frustrated at this point and encounter roadblocks that you cannot overcome, you could just simply reach out to a fellow artist uh, for a few tips or join a community. I have several linked below. I'd love to, to see you there. Or third, you could just simply take a breather, get up, walk away, again, some tips from the last video, catch it if you missed it, and come back to it later. That is okay walking away as well. A piece doesn't have to be finished in one sitting, in one week. You can determine that length of time. Coming back to any piece, I know for me personally, with a fresh set of eyes, a different perspective even, can certainly fix a lot of problems. Flipping the canvas horizontally also does that too. So again, actionable things you can do, take a break, come back. When you come back, flip the canvas's orientation to the opposite way you were looking at it, and a combination of the weight and flipping of it will actually give you a very fresh take on your piece of work, especially too if you've been glaring at it for hours. Just don't let a rough patch mess with your head. I know back when I used to play uh, Call of Duty when I was younger, and you lose two, three games in a row, it can start, you know, to snowball and it can get in your head and you just play worse and worse and worse. 
same thing can happen with your art. You can get in your own headspace, you start getting in your own way, and just you can't out kind of draw that. You just have to get up. So keep pushing, keep trying, and remember that uh, failure is just one of those stepping stones to your success. So remember there are tons of influencers, there's tons of artists out there on TikToks and in YouTubes. Learning theory from anywhere at any time has never been easier. It's never been more accessible. Art has never been more accessible as it is today. But all of that knowledge will not amount to anything unless we actually just go and try and implement it. And when we're trying to implement it, it's our frustrations that can create friction that will ultimately slow that learning down. And what we want to do, as I stated in the video, is we want to minimize any of those frictions that we can. So aside from removing those frictions, remember number two, it's not about that result. It is about the journey. And number three, fail, fail a lot. Just try again. All right. Now, if you liked uh, this video and got something out of it or you have a specific topic you want to request just let me know below i have topics on this channel from the last 12 years covering art business theory and of course techniques thanks again for watching and i'll catch you guys next time